We assume that you already have a basic idea which variables can be mapped from imaging spectroscopy data and how to acquire reference data in the field. But how on earth do you link your in-situ data with spectral information or even retrieve information of the desired variables from space without training the model with ground truth? Well, there are actually quite a number of methods and they differ depending on the application. In this video, I want to present a very short overview of methods for mapping vegetation traits from satellite imaging spectroscopy with a focus on agricultural areas. One of the main areas of interest is the estimation of traits or features of the vegetative system and to see how they vary in space and time. Functional vegetation traits are often continuous in nature and can be grouped into diverse subgroups. We differentiate biophysical traits, for example, leaf area index, crop canopy temperature, or biomass, biochemical traits, for example, leaf chlorophyll content, leaf nitrogen content, gross primary productivity and yield, biological traits, for example, crop phenology, geometrical traits, such as plant density or leaf inclination, and geophysical traits, such as soil electrical conductivity. Before applying any estimation method to imaging spectroscopy data, you should identify which algorithm would be appropriate and applicable for the specific task. The pool of potential algorithms is large, and sometimes the best solution can only be found by testing. However, not all methods are suitable to solve a specific retrieval problem from the start. Therefore, the following aspects could be considered before choosing a model. Interpretability. Is it acceptable to work with complex models that are not easy to understand? Complexity. Which information is available from the sensor in terms of spectral, spatial, and temporal resolution, and which at canopy level like vegetation structure, composition, or phenological stage? Scalability. The need to upscale from leaf to canopy scale, for instance, when satellite data are being used for the estimation of vegetation traits. Processing time, how long it takes to build, train, and test the model, as well as application time, how long it takes to predict the traits of interest, and last but not least, the required accuracy of the final data products. Currently, this research topic is highly dynamic, with new studies exploring new methods every few months, and in the future, the methodological categories I present here may expand into further subcategories and combinations thereof. For the retrieval of vegetation traits, we basically differentiate regression models, hybrid methods, and mechanistic models. Regression models include parametric as well as non-parametric methods such as linear regression and non-linear regression. In our context, mechanistic models refer to radiative transfer models that make use of physically based inversion as well as to process models, and hybrid methods combine non-parametric methods and radiative transfer models. Let's look at the subgroups in more detail. We'll start with parametric regression. A plethora of parametric regressions in the form of vegetation indices have been published in the context of optical remote sensing. They differ according to their mathematical formulation and number of spectral bands used. Hence, categorization into six main methods can be made. Narrow band vegetation indices, using discrete selected bands to formulate simple ratios or normalized differences. A famous example is the Normalized Difference Vegetation Index, or NDVI. Spectral positions, such as Red Edge Inflection Point, or REAP for short, as well as spectral derivates, spectral integrals, parameterizations of the continuum removal, and wavelet transformation. There is an index database containing a huge number of indices for a variety of sensors and applications. You can find the link in the resources section. Next, the group of non-parametric regressions can be subdivided into linear non-parametric regressions or chemometrics and non-linear non-parametric regressions known as machine learning. Non-parametric methods directly define regression functions according to information from remotely sensed data. Hence, in contrast to parametric regression methods, a non-explicit choice is to be made on spectral band relationships, transformations, or fitting functions. 
While in parametric models a finite number of parameters exist, non-parametric models have a potentially infinite number of parameters. Hence, they exhibit a growing complexity with an increasing amount of training data. While the group of mechanistic models also refers to process or crop growth models, we will only discuss physically-based radiative transfer models, or RTMs for short here. RTMs describe the interaction of photons with biophysical and biochemical plant properties by means of physical laws, and can be used to analyze mechanistic principles of spectral and spatial scaling effects. They are widely used for variable retrieval by inversion, but also for the development of parametric regressions, generation of training data for non-parametric regressions, and, beyond that, for designing new Earth observation missions. Exemplary groups of RTMs are turbid medium, geometric optics, hybrid models, and computer graphic models. Finally, hybrid methods refer to a combination of at least two methods that are used synergistically to achieve the objective more efficiently. In vegetation property mapping from Earth observation data, hybrid methods are often referred to as the combination of machine learning methods and RTMs, thus combining the flexibility and scalability of machine learning while incorporating the physics encoded in RTMs. In this course, we want to focus on hybrid retrieval methods, and you will learn more details in our next video. Okay, let's summarize the method categories. You should now have a basic idea of parametric regression, non-parametric regression, RTM inversion, and hybrid methods.